Um, Christmas for you. And how yeah. how are you feeling after that um last game? You know, how did the ankle feel? Yeah. How was the recovery? Uh, I feel good. Obviously, a little sore. Haven't been hit in a while. Um, I feel good. Yeah. What did you, I guess, what did you kind of take away for yourself from that first one, just as far as, you know, trying to find a groove and, uh, find, you know, get your wind and all that kind of stuff? Um, I went felt fine. I think with anything, it's like an injury. Like, you just got to be comfortable being in those positions again. So, for me, it was like not looking down on my feet, trying not to step on nothing, you know. Um. So, I mean, it is what it is. Just mentally, just got to get through that. And I feel good. Um, feel good to be a teammate again. Yeah. Um, you know, you guys have faced this Wings team. Um, they're big and long. Mm-hmm. Um, what is the key to trying to offset them? Uh, just playing together as a team in terms of rebounding and defense, getting deflections, being active around their bigs. Um, you know, they definitely – are bigger than us and they have more weight and size down there on the block. So just trying to do our work early and not allow them to dictate what they want to do. Ariel, welcome back and congrats Thank on the you. extension because I missed your press conference earlier. So. Oh, so good. Thank you, Jim. Um, for, you know, for both of you guys just on Friday, getting some folks back, including yourself, what kind of felt natural playing with that kind of new group and, and what are you guys still kind of working on on either and just finding, you know, that rhythm? Um, I think the biggest thing is our communication level went up, obviously, because you're used to people um, and being able to communicate in a specific way, like our coverages and different things and knowing which person is going to stay, which person wants to switch and different things like that. Um, So I would just say kind of like the chemistry on the defensive end. I mean, offensively. We still got rhythm to get back. I still have to get a rhythm that I have to get back. Um, but overall, I think as a team, we can get in much more of a flow now. I agree. <laughs> um, you know, Ariel, for you, with it, with it being, uh, you know, the Mystics Hall of Fame, the induction day, um, is that something, you know, either this year or last year when they did it, is that something that's, like, on your mind? Or, or you know, do you think about that? Or do you not really, um, do you kind of put that aside and still get to um think about it as in like what like um you know does it does it inspire you is it something you guys talk about as a team at all um anything like that um it's definitely something we've talked to um or talked about as a team um I think with anything the W is so unique in the fact that the trailblazers often come back or we've been coached by them or they're coaching in this league um so it's a really cool thing um but it's definitely something that's inspiring because not only do you aspire to get to this level um, and make a change? But the legends that go up in the rafters, I mean, they've put their stamp on basketball as a whole. And it's obviously someone or some people that you look up to. So, yeah, they are role models and they are inspiring. Last thing for me, just for you, Queen, you know, Eric was saying before, I think it was before Friday's game, that he, you know, talked to some players about just with um, people coming back, like how minutes might change and things like that. Is that something you've talked to him about or, or does that just not need to be a conversation? Um. He's talked to me about it a little bit, but honestly, it doesn't need to be a conversation. Um, I mean, it's the coach's decision in terms of who he wants, lineups, matchups. So <clears throat> all you can do is put your trust in him and, you know, he knows what he's doing and just being ready when it's your turn to get on the floor and not letting what everything else, affect, everything else going on affect you. You can just go, what was it, seven for seven last week? <laughs> awesome. All I can do is do me. <laughs> put it on a shirt. <laughs> Yeah. Congratulations as well. Thank you. I'm curious, is there anything that from watching the team while you were out trying to get back into it, is there anything that you were really excited to be able to come back and be a part of maybe certain elements that might have been different that they were able to pick up and kind of figure out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I honestly say our defense, I think they did a phenomenal job with all the new people coming in and being able to sustain uh, specifically our zone and our communication of on ball coverage. Queen, obviously you came after Shakira's injury and mm-hmm. now that she's becoming a little bit more active and being involved in practices and stuff like that. What's kind of the biggest thing that stands out to you about her and maybe how she approaches the game, either while in practice or you know, work? I would say definitely her mobility and her agility. You don't see six five 
moving the way she does. You know, obviously she has, you know, her hip going on and she's still coming back from that. But I think it's really impressive how she moves and how active she is on defense. And um, I think she's also grown a lot from last year um, defensively. So it's been it's been nice to see that that jump for her. Oh, I think that's everything, Kira. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yep, that's it. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> Elena Hip, um, can you is that brand new and kind of kind of where did that come from? As um, you know, as kind of as you ramp up, yeah, I've mentioned a few times, like as you try to ramp people back up, you, it's a little unpredictable always what's gonna happen and um, you know was something that cropped up a little bit, but was under control enough, obviously, to play. Um, the ankle was the main concern. And then in the game, uh, just jarred it a little bit on a kind of a funny stop. Um, so uh, just kind of reevaluating and seeing. Uh, well, I don't have a feel yet for timetable or anything like that. Um, but that is the issue now. Ankle feels good. Ankle feels good. Ankle feels uh, good. Is, yeah. is, it, is it similar to Kira? Is it like a... Oh, no, nothing to that extent. Okay. No, no, it shouldn't be anything to that extent. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. Probably gonna be down. I don't know. A little bit. I don't know. She'll yeah. see. We'll see the team docs today. Um, with Kira, is this kind of what you were talking about before, as far as trying to figure out that management of how much recovery time she needs, kind of thing? Three games in five days with travel thrown in the middle. Um, just as you know, we as you know from last week, um, it was hard for her to go each day. So we're just trying to be smart. You know, if, if she doesn't play today, our, the, our games are spaced out a lot better the next two weeks um, to try to get her a little bit of rhythm because the last thing we want to do is, you know, take steps backwards at this point. Yeah. And last one for me, um, just this, you know, this Dallas team is long and you guys have struggled with that a couple times already. Uh, what's the key to trying to, you know, offset that and again yeah <laughs> you lost two bigs before here we are again um, <laughs> well i think we're in a little better headspace for one from when we you know we're down at their place last um same things in a lot of ways from that i talked about after the game the other night you know rebounding the ball defending the paint uh, we made a choice in the middle of that game that we were going to do a better job. And that's top two things on the scouting report today is, you know, we give up 60 in the paint to, to Dallas last time we played them. Um, you cannot get eaten up by people cutting behind us, people driving through the middle of us, and then you're scrambling and then they offensive rebound. Um, so we have to do a better job walling up the paint, getting bodies on bodies. Um, and then, you know, actually watching our game back with them last time, I thought we got a lot of good shots and we missed layups at the rim. We missed wide open threes, make a few shots. It feels a little bit different. When you talk about that rebounding, is, is that just, you know, boxing out as soon as the ball goes up, you know, find, find somebody? Yes, we cannot be standing next to people looking up at the ball. Um, I thought the second half the other night was a little bit of a template for us. We had our bigs engage with Aaliyah and Melissa Smith and Emma Cannon and all those people. And then we had our guards swooping in to, to give us numbers. Um, you know, ideally we're forcing long shots over the top of us, which means we're going to have some long boards. So everybody's got to be active and involved. There can't be any spectators on the boards. Thank you. Yep. So with Elena, is, is that hip what was tight the other night? Just kind of trying to connect the dots. Yeah, I think so. After talking to her a little bit more, um, yep, I think so. Um, and then with you know her and Shakira out, you know now you just, you know you just have Ariel working her back in today. Obviously, you'd love to work them all in at once, but does it does it simplify things at all? Just kind of trying to reintegrate one player into that group that you had. I'd rather be complicated and have more players. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, you know with with just nine games left before playoffs, if I'm counting correctly. Do you feel like you have enough time to ramp everybody back up and get everybody, you know, all kind of in rhythm for the playoffs? Or do you think that's going to be something that will be, you know, that you'll be managing still going into the playoffs at this point? I mean, I think so. It is what it is. You know, we don't have a lot of choice. So uh, we took a first step with with Ariel the other night and Elena, and hopefully that's not too serious. And then, you know, Shakira's kind of got a plan and she's got a couple games under her belt. We saw some positive things from, you know, all of them in the game the other night. So, Honestly, I don't spend, uh, you know, obviously it's something I have to worry about and getting people back in, but I don't spend a lot of time philosophizing about whether it'll be enough time or 
worrying about can we get there. We just have to do it. We just have to to take it one day at a time. And uh, Nikki with Friday. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you talked about her a little bit after her passing, but you know, what are you and the team kind of feeling today, and and what does it mean to you to see her get inducted into the Hall of Fame today? I think it's going to be you know obviously a bittersweet day. But it's uh, I think it's going to be a, an emotional and hopefully uplifting day. You know, it's going to be a full house, all wearing shirts with her number on it. We've got alumni in the building that played with her, um, our, our previous Hall of Famers. We got to have dinner with them and Nikki's family last night, um, which was just cool. I, I didn't know her family at all. And it was nice to spend a little time with them. And um no, I think, you know, the halftime program, I think we'll have some cool things in it. I don't know how much has been released publicly, but um, it should be an inspiring day and obviously front of mind. And then last thing for me, you know, the press release did mention that you're going to have a lot of alums in the building. Yeah. What does that just mean to have them, you know, coming back and, and kind of packing the house? I think it's a good reminder, you know, just just to use Nikki as an example and other people of, of that era of players that where we are now is thanks to them. Um, teams and the league were built on their backs. And, you know, my, my life, my career looks differently because of people like them. You know, I get to sit here and do this because those players who had to go overseas to make a living and they didn't have a WNBA to play in. And then all of a sudden they had a league um, and they threw everything into it. I think Mystics fans, even though, um, you know, they didn't have necessarily playoff success a bunch in those early years, have really great memories of watching Nikki and Vicky Bullet and Shamiko and all those guys play. Um, it's still really ingrained in the fabric of the franchise. So it's cool to I look around the league and you see a bunch of teams doing it, trying to trying to honor their former players. And um, it's a good memory of where we started. And, you know, what is it? You're 27 of the league. It's still something to be proud of. You got the retro shirt too. I did wear the retro shirt. Yeah, it was well done. A good day for it. Obviously, there's only been one game with Ariel back, but what's kind of the next step to get her more up to speed? Like, what are you looking for? And maybe this game, what you see this game? Hopefully, it just slows down a little bit for her. She can get her rhythm back. You know, there's there's nothing like game rhythm and game timing. Um, she got some good shots the other night, made it made a tough one, and then uh, you know had a couple open looks where you could just see she didn't have her timing by getting her feet down and turn in at the same, you know, it's just game speed when you have to read it, a live defense. Um, it'll just get better for her and more comfortable. And obviously, you don't want to be in the situation of seeing different players come back in different ways, but maybe what is different about Ariel and maybe how we've seen Elena try and come back and Shakira is going to kind of stand out with kind of her approach to coming back. Uh, different. I'm not sure. I really don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's, similar rehab to Elena in terms of um, severity of the ankle sprain and everything. So um, just don't need anybody to step on any feet. And my last one is about Slim. Leaving the league in steals, obviously case to be made for a defensive player of the year. What are your, your thoughts on that and how she has been able to impact the team on uh, that side of the ball? Is it She's a ball hawk. Man, that, she gets her hands on everything. I think we have – um, I know there's a few other good candidates, but I think we have two very clear first team all defensive candidates and her and Tosh and, you know, Slim would be, I think, her third year in a row leading the league in steals if she does it. I don't think that's ever been done um, unless, I mean, Tamika Ketchings is every defensive record, so maybe she did it somewhere in there. But uh, no, and I think you mentioned everybody's talking about having an aerial back and what it does is it gives us a bunch of wing defenders that can cover for each other and it lets all of them individually be more aggressive. So I'm hoping now that we have um, kind of a full complement of, you know, perimeter defenders that it only pushes each other into, into higher places. Yep. Any other in person? We'll go to zoom Ron. Hey, Eric, this is Reagan and Ron. Um, just wanted to uh, ask you a little bit about, you had a great comment about Natasha Cloud and her leadership and encouraging her to just lead from that real authentic <laughs> space in that place. Um, can you share any more just about 
um, the impact that she has uh, on your team when she's doing that and you see her at her best self in that leadership space? I mean, the first thing Tosh does is she competes so hard every night. Um, she sets a tone for our team with her her effort, her engagement, um, her pace that she plays with. And then I think, she, you know, she'd be the first to tell you she's at her best when um, she feels totally in control of uh, how she sees the game, her emotions. Um, when she's that that steady, you know, hand on the wheel for us because she's got the ball so much, she's guarding the best player so much. Um, it sets the tone for our team. And I think her and Slim have, you know, together – really tried to, you know, dedicate themselves to being um, what the team needs at all times from a, from an emotional leadership standpoint. And, you know, I think the last couple games, we've seen the benefit of that, you know, in, in tough moments or when we've had to make some adjustments during the game, um, you know, they've, they've set a tone in timeouts, um, how they've responded to runs from opposing teams in games. I mean, that's what we need if we want to go where we want to go. That's great. Thank you. One other uh, question for me is, you know, uh, is it truly with dealing with these injuries and return to play um, protocols, is it truly game by game or at this point of the season, are you looking at standings and opponents and matchups and road home and how to get the most out of them in these last nine games of regular season? I think it's pro probably less about, you know, opponents and matchups and standings um, as it is what makes sense in the schedule kind of over a, a week or 10 day period. You know, we had with Shakira, we kind of had to sit down and look at um, given what we've known since she's come back and, uh, you know, how she's progressed to, to look at the next 10 days and go, OK, what makes the most sense to get the most out of her? Um probably just trying to have everybody peak at the end of the year. You know, we know we don't have to get them 100% all the way back to 30 minutes a game um, today. You know, we, we want to keep going in a positive direction without taking steps backwards. Um, and then, you know, schedule matters also in terms of travel and stuff. Like if this were, I don't want to do hypotheticals, but we knew we were Friday night game, flight home, turnaround, Sunday early game, maybe not the best for Shakira um at this point so we know we can have a game tuesday and hopefully she's fully good for that um i try not to make comments like that this year because every time i do something crazy goes <laughs> goes yeah. on so um no a little bit like we did with elena actually last year uh, when we were just trying to to map out a couple weeks in advance and um, see what makes the most sense for each of them but the each individual cases you know ariel felt good she's it's not the same as shakira's injury and um, she can go again today Awesome. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. That's it, coach. Thank you.